I heard about a movement recently to do away with pi because it's wrong, um, and I was very excited because I've lived with the wrongness of pi for my whole life, and I was about time someone did something about it. But when I looked at what they wanted to replace pi with, I was sorely disappointed because it's still wrong. And here is my response to it. It's called pi may be wrong, but so is tau. Here's the story. We take a circle and uh, we measure its diameter, d, and we measure its circumference, c, and we divide the circumference by the diameter, and we find that it's always exactly the same answer, no matter which circle we pick, and that answer is pi. And uh, then our pro-tau people come in and they say, well, that's silly. What we should really be doing is we should be defining our circle using its radius. So we've got the radius r and we've got the circumference c and we divide c by r and we get the number 2 pi which they call tau. And they argue that this makes most of maths more comprehensible and simplifies trigonometry and geometry and complex numbers. But all of this is really complete bunkus because both of these approaches are completely wrong because the fundamental circle number ought to actually be half of pi, which is a quarter of tau, which I choose to call eta. Because I think that is the real fundamental circle constant. And why do I think this? Well, let's just take a look at that circle again, but look a bit at it in a little bit of a different way and consider instead two journeys. So here we have a point A and a point B. And you might want to go from A to B, and you could do that by going along a straight line, which of course would be the shortest distance between A and B. But it may be that you want to travel from A to B along a different path. Maybe you'll go uh, like this. And the question we want to know is, how many times longer is this path than the path from A to B? Of course, the curve we really want to know about is a circle. So this, this circular path from A to B, how many times longer is it than the shortest distance, which is the distance between A and B? And the answer is... that the long path... over the straight path is eta. This number eta is a fundamental number to describe the differences in path length. Every curve that goes from A to B would have a number like eta to describe how many times longer it is than the shortest possible distance between A and B. So this number eta is highlighting that uh, there is a fundamental constant that goes with every curve and the one that goes with a circle is eta. But it's even better than that. There's more connections that we can focus on. Let's look at one to do with area. Suppose we've got a circle and we want to compare its area to something that we know how to find the area of. So why don't we draw a square inside our circle? We know how to find the area of a square. So let's compare the area of the circle to the area of this square. The circle area over the square area is eta. So not only does eta describe a fundamental property of circular paths over straight paths, it also describes a fundamental property of circle areas over square areas. Now isn't that much nicer than either tau or pi in the way that they describe circles? Okay, but what about all these people, uh, these tau defenders, who say that tau represents the distance around a circle and therefore in terms of angle uh, represents a turn of one full revolution. Well to those people I say who said that one full revolution was the fundamental angle? If I was asked what the fundamental angle was I would think it's a right angle 
Our society is built on right angles. We spend a lot of time making sure that things are right angles. So it would seem to me uh, that a right angle would be the fundamental angle. And also trigonometry is built from the beginning on right angles. And so it seems only reasonable that a right angle should be our fundamental angle. And what is a right angle? But a quarter of a circle, right? And so a quarter of a circle would be a quarter of tau and a half of pi and eta. Eta represents a right angle in terms of distances around a circle um, and so therefore should represent our fundamental angle as eta. And that's why I think it's a logical choice um, for our fundamental circle constant. But what about all these claims that trigonometry is better with tau? Well that's ridiculous because trigonometry is all about right angles and eta is a right angle. Let's just have a look at the beginnings of trigonometry. Look, when you start trigonometry, you draw like a right angle triangle, like this. And you draw an angle in your right angle triangle, um, and then say this one here is A, and this one here is B, and this one here is C. Then you say that um, sine theta is A on C, and uh, cos theta is uh, B on C. Right, that's the beginnings of trigonometry. But see that um, this angle just here that's eta and therefore these other two angles here add up to eta. So that means that this angle over here in the corner is actually eta minus theta. Alright, well what does that mean? Well let's just have a look. Sine of eta minus theta would be b on c which would be cos theta and cos of eta minus theta would be a on c which would be sine theta. So sine of eta minus theta is cos theta and cos of eta minus theta is sine theta. That's brilliant! It's so easy to understand. Two angles um, that add up to a right angle have matching sines and cosses but the other way around. Much prettier than what you would write if you had a pi on 2 or a tau on 4 there. And let's also think about what would happen if we wanted to define uh, sine for angles more than um, eta, more than that fits into a right angled triangle. So what you normally do is you draw a circle and you draw your angle like this and uh, you draw a line there and in fact what you do is you figure out a little angle that goes in here and you define sine uh, and cos and tan and all your other trigonometric things based on that angle which does fit in a right angle triangle. So it's still all about right angles even when you're bigger than a right angle. And even more, we're going to repeat the same values of sine again through this triangle over on this left hand side over here. And when we get to the next quadrant just here, we're going to repeat the values of sine again, albeit they'll be in a different order, but we're going to keep repeating the same values over and over every eta. Let's draw what that looks like as an actual function of sine. Like that, you can see that the shape of the function is repeated quite often and what are the numbers at which that shape repeats itself? Eta and 2 eta and 3 eta and 4 eta. Every eta you get the same shape again. It's just up a different way. There's four possible orientations and so it takes 4 eta to get back to the beginning again. That seems so clear and easy to me, much clearer than tau on 4 or pi on 2, to have a whole number of your fundamental circle number. And when you combine all this together, you get really cool stuff going on. See, look at this fabulous pattern. Sine of theta plus eta is cos theta and sine of theta plus 2 eta is minus sine theta 
and sine of theta plus 3 eta is minus cos theta and sine of theta plus 4 eta is sine theta again. And that pattern there is very much similar to the same pattern you get when you differentiate sine and cos. And you can see um, the pattern in the odd ones and the even ones. The e odd ones you switch to the cos uh, instead of the sine, and the even ones remain as signs. There's so many patterns there that are drawn out by the fact that you've used whole number multiples of the fundamental constant eta. Right, well, let's get to the next argument and knock that down too. The next argument is about complex numbers. See, with the complex numbers argument, uh, we have um, the formula with pi is e to the i pi is minus 1. It's a lovely formula. It uses both e and i and pi and 1. Uh, then, of course, there's e to the i tau, uh, which is 1, and they're wonderful things. Um, but they don't, I think, give us the full generality of what we're looking for uh, when we do um, powers of e with an i in them. You see, the formula that goes with eta is e to the i eta is i. This lets you know that some angles don't give you real numbers. They give you complex numbers that aren't real. And even better than that, uh, let's just have a look at what this means. Here's 1, which would be e to the i times 0, and adding an extra eta, i.e. a right angle, ends up here at i. A rotation of a right angle, a rotation of eta, gets you from 1 to i, which would mean that another rotation of eta would get you from i to minus 1. So we're beginning to point out the fact that multiplying by i is a rotation through a right angle, simply by using our fundamental constant in the simplest formula we can put it in. But again, we get the wonderful patterns happening with the whole numbers. Look, e to the i eta is i, but e to the i um, of 2 eta is minus 1, and e to the i of 3 eta is minus i, and e to the i of 4 eta is 1. Look, the even ones are real, and the odd ones are imaginary. And we can see that the pattern will continue, and so successive multiplications by i run through i and minus 1 and minus i and 1 the fourth roots of 1. But there is one argument left in case you need anything else to convince you, and it's about approximating eta. And it goes like this. What we're going to do is the needle experiment. And the needle experiment goes like this. We draw parallel lines. A whole heap of them. And we pick a needle whose length is the same as the distance between those parallel lines. And we throw our needle at the parallel lines. And maybe it ends up here, or 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 here, or whatever. And sometimes it hits the lines, and sometimes it doesn't. What do you think the probability of your needle hitting one of the lines is? You know what? In our old notation using pi, we can write that probability down. The probability of touching a line? 2 on pi, which is 1 in eta. Not 1 over pi or 1 over tau, but 1 over eta instead. So there you go, there's my argument. Um, while pi may be wrong, so is tau, and we should use eta instead.